Thank you so much, Joanne and Eric, for a wonderful, wonderful start to Peace Halifax. Uh, what a spectacular way to welcome the United Nations International Day of Peace. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being with us and, um, and for joining us and getting us started in such a beautiful and peaceful way. We'd like to continue on in that vibe a bit. And one of the reasons why we hold Peace Halifax every year is so that together we can explore um, not only what peace is, but how does it manifest in our day-to-day -day lives? And so one of the things that we've done is actually explore some very practical questions related to peace, to make peace as real as possible in our day-to-day -day lives. We thought it was important to explore some questions. So we're gonna do that together right now. And what better place to start than with the question, what is peace? Peace is a state of mind. I think we all know that intrinsically. It is stable. It is harmonious. A peaceful state of mind is accepting. And it is also powerful. And how do others experience that? Well, when we are in that peaceful state of mind, others experience calmness, and tranquility. Some people think that peace is impossible, that they're not wired for peace, that their minds are too busy to be peaceful. Some think peace means being weak, or meek. But it's actually the exact opposite. A truly peaceful person is undisturbed by external forces. Think about that for a moment. It takes great strength to remain composed to be unshaken, especially when faced with controversy, conflict, or injustice. The capacity to be truly peaceful is in each person. We are all wired for peace. So regardless of what's going on in your mind, peace is your strongest innermost quality. And hopefully today at Peace Halifax, you can access the deep reservoir of stable energy that's inside you, just waiting to be illuminated. Some people ask, can peace create change? 
if I'm feeling stable and harmonious and accepting, can I be powerful? Can I help make or be a part of the change that I believe is needed in this world? It's a great question. Through collective engagement and cooperation, peace can most definitely create sustainable change. When it is sincere and intentional. So we're working together with sincere hearts and a shared purpose. In a world of differences, people sometimes think change can only occur when forced or even through violence. But sustainable change cannot be created through force. We know that any change that involves fear is not sustainable. Because with fear, people will eventually resist the change or push to change it back once pressure is removed. Change is most sustainable at a societal and personal level when there is collective engagement and cooperation. One of the most common is that it is passive, somehow a soft thing that is felt but doesn't happen. But peace is active, not passive. And change that is motivated by peace overrides fear and force and is infused with the energy of cooperation. How does my peace affect others? We often talk about peace in terms of other people. I could be peaceful if this happened. I could be peaceful if this person did this thing. I could be peaceful if this system wasn't the way that it was. But peace starts with each and every one of us. When I focus my mind on peace, the silence is calming and contagious. Peace is contagious. Pause, stop.
have a determined thought to remain peaceful. And peace will grow. And influence others. When a person stays peaceful and does not react. to the stress and busyness around them. They can create a sense of calm. Which is helpful to others. This can rekindle the peace in someone else or create space for others to check themselves and to notice the peacelessness within themselves. So now we know how accessing our own peace can affect those around us. But what happens when we are witness to sad or disturbing events in the world? Those events that can feel all too present through radios or televisions, social media, apps on our phones. It's so easy for us to be surrounded by peacelessness. So how do we respond? How do we stay peaceful? The first step really is to acknowledge events with love. Love and good energy provide an antidote to difficult situations. There's no doubt that it is hard to witness the suffering of others. It can make us feel helpless and afraid. As a caring human being, I want to do something. And one thing I can always do 
is to give good energy. Regardless of what I see or hear, I can send good energy. For instance, when I hear a siren, or read a terrible headline, or see some disturbing pictures on social media. I can immediately stop a cavalcade of emotions coursing through me. I can immediately send thoughts of power and of peace to whoever is involved. With this action, I am reaching out with love. I am doing something by sending good vibrations. And when I give love and peace, I also protect myself from absorbing the suffering and fear around me. I hope that you've enjoyed this meditation on making peace practical. I hope it's answered some of the questions you may have about peace and how it can be emerged in your daily life. Thanks very much and enjoy the rest of your day at Peace Halifax.